Hey sportsmen, John Bergsman here from Fisherman's Digest. We're here at Tangled Tackle in Manistee, Michigan. We've got five great reports for you this week. First one, Drummond Island Perch. Now John Goebel and Justin Bupp up at Drummond Island tell me the perch fishing's been out of sight. Second stop, Traverse City, Michigan. Now we got a few good bites going on on Traverse, but the first one I want to talk to you about is deep water suspended big pike. This is a really unusual bite that happens every fall on inland lakes. We want to turn you on to that. Third stop, Lake Erie. Lake Erie perch right between the Ohio line and Port Clinton, Ohio in that mid area by Davis Bessie Power Plant. My friend Rocco Papandrea from Walleye Bandit Charters has been hammering on the perch for the last month. He's got a great report for us. Then we're all the way up in northern Minnesota where I spent four days last week up at Lake of the Woods and the Rainy River. Now, we caught some great walleye. We filmed an awesome show. We're gonna give you a report out of Lake of the Woods. We're gonna end the day on River Smallies. That's right from basically the best spot looks like to me from south of Manistee all the way to the St. Joe and Berrien Springs. We've got some really good river smallmouth action going on from our friend Eric Richards, as well as Mark Rapson from Black Pearl, who pulled his boat, but now he's been really getting his fishing frenzy off of some great stream action for smallmouth bass. Stay tuned for five great reports. So I've got my trusty perch rod in hand. I'm gonna to talk to you a little because a lot of people have said, geez, John, you give good reports, but show us exactly what you're talking about. So uh, John Goble up at, uh, up at Drummond Island has been catching a lot of really nice perch on a simple rig that I refer to as a perch pounder. And a perch pounder is a two hook perch rig. It's made with light monofilament line and so it hangs away just a little bit and it's based on the bottom with about, oh, anywhere from a half to a one ounce sinker. Now, the key to working a perch pounder properly is to first tip it, of course, with either a, some cut bait like a, a belly of a, of a little minnow or some shrimp or better yet, a live shiner. Now, once you get that hooked on, now you'll see perch pounders come in a lot of different colors. This one's green with a glow tip they come in salmon and yellow and chartreuse and pink, lots of different colors to match up. The key to it is to put enough weight for the wind conditions and the depth you're fishing to be able to hold that sinker on the bottom while putting a little up pressure on your rod. Now I use a six foot six, this happens to be a Lewis TP1. What I like about this rod is it's got a really good backbone but the, the front of it, it's got a really soft tip. So I like to put just a little bend in my rod, put enough weight on so that you can lift your rod tip, create a bend without that sinker coming off the bottom immediately. That gives you a constant tight line. And when a perch comes up and takes that, immediately you'll feel that in the rod tip and then you can just lift up and start reeling. That's kind of the concept on a two hook perch rig. I happen to use the perch pounder often, which we've got on right here. So, if you've got a couple variables, if you've got windy conditions, you're going to want to go to a heavier weight. Uh, if you're fishing deeper, you're going to want to go to a heavy weight as well. So I call, basically I find that a half, three quarter or one ounce does the job in almost all circumstances. You don't want to go so heavy that you can't easily lift your sinker off the bottom or it creates too much bend in your rod. So find that perfect medium, always show up with a variety of sinkers with you, as well as three or four colors of perch pounders, because truthfully, you never know what color is best for the day, and there are hot colors. I've had it many times where a pink outfished everything or a green outfished everything, and it wasn't just who was holding it. We've switched rods, and the guy who was holding the right color seemed to catch most of the fish. So, Drummond Island right now, eight to 12 foot of water, perch rigs, be willing to move around in the shallows outside of the Drummond Island. There's lots of bays up there, but this is absolutely the best time of year to go to Drummond Island and fish these big, great big perch that are coming in out of the St. Mary's River and Northern Lake Huron. Here we are with our VBT3. This is our vertical tree, three unit, 
incredible for fishing inline planer boards. The reason why is because when you can stack rod holders on top of each other, instead of in line, all these rod tips are fanned out to the side of the boat, going to our planer boards off the side. You can virtually turn this boat on a dime and the rod uh, tips keep the lines separated so when you're turning the fishing lines never cross or tangle. So a vertical tree really helps in that application and allows all the rest of your gear on the boat to continue fishing without be interrupting anything. So each one of our rod holders on our tree are adjustable six positions up and down. So this whole unit gets to be real compact. Our, our slots or grooves designed in here. Two uh, stainless steel screws allow each rod holder to adjust up and down. We could actually add another Another one to the back side by taking our cap off on here and as you can see I'm going to go into all the accessories here individual uh, videos on it for us but um, uh, planer board caddy beverage holder tool caddy and then in our base is all solid machined out of aluminum this whole entire thing lifts up and it rotates so we can either fish it straight off the side of the boat or like I just had it one of the coolest features when we're fishing this way just a little bit of an angle back that rod tip is already bent for us. So when that fish bites and the rod goes off, it's a whole lot easier to pick the rod up, walk to the back of the boat and fight our fish. So our next bite is the Traverse City, Michigan area and we've got a really cool report. Now I'm gonna reach over here and grab my salmon trolling rod. Now, what do I got a salmon trolling rod in my hand for? Well, I'll tell you what, my friend Captain Dave Rommel from uh, Tiny Bubbles Charters sent me a great report, and as you see the picture scrolling across your screen, he's catching jumbo, I mean big northern pikes, on inland lakes throughout the Traverse City area, whether it's uh, Platte Lake or, ben or, or Crystal Lake or Green Lake or Duck Lake in the tra Greater Traverse or Leelanau. Uh, the, all of these lakes have awesome northern pike fishing, and he's using salmon rods, and brightly colored magnum salmon spoons, similar to what I got right here. You want the big spoons, and this is how he's doing it. He's leaving his riggers in his lead core, so he's mixing beach trolling with rigger fishing to target the 20 foot down depths on these lakes. So, three colors on a high day, four colors would be 20 foot down, riggers 20 down with your, your down rigger rod with a big spoon let out 50 feet. So 50 feet of line, clip it onto your rigger, set the rigger at 20 feet. That's the exact set that Dave was catching most of the fish on. Four colors of lead with 25 or 50 feet of leader on a board spread out wide. You can get a nice spread of boards out. It's a family fun fishing excursion. You can see there that Dave's uh, daughter Ellie and Cass were reeling in fish, having a great time. and. Uh, this is just one of those bites that happens every year in the fall of the year. You know, walleye and smallmouth bass become real predictable. So do the big northerns. The big northerns will hold up underneath the schools of shad and they will feed heavily on them. You have to understand the weeds on the shoreline are dying so it becomes much harder for the pike to hide in the weeds. So they choose to go suspend under the bigger schools of bait fish and that's how they tend to feed in the fall. So this suspended fish bite with big spoons, salmon style, is an awesome way. Try it the next time you get out on your favorite inland lake. You know, every fishing boat needs a place to put rods, store rods, and have rod holders to go fishing, and the Anger Quest Family Fish has that in spades. I'm Captain Lance Valentine, and here on the Family Fish, I'm gonna show you the integrated arch. We've got the ability to put up to five adjustable Traxtec rod holders on each side so we can run offshore planer boards. We've got rod storage across the top, the ability to put in lights, radar, VHF radio antennas, and any accessories we need to turn this family fish into a hardcore fishing boat. Check out this and all the other great features on AngerQuest at your local AngerQuest dealer. Our next stop, Lake Erie, and Captain Rocco Papandrea from Walleye Bandit Charters tells me that for the last four weeks, he has been absolutely lights out, pounding nice perch in that Meineke Marina to, well, Rocco stays at Meineke Marina in the campground, and his boat's chartered right there in the marina. So again, we're going right back to our perch pounder again. Perch pounders are the ticket, tipped with lake shiners, just like this, and uh, boy, these things are hooky. And uh, this is exactly what Captain Rocco has been using straight over the side of the boats. Doubles, doubles, doubles is what he's been telling me, catching lots of fish. 
in that nine to 15, 14 inch range with a decent number of 11 to 14 inch fish, which are awesome fish. He's been catching boat limits for his entire crew on the days he's able to get out, which is really good perch fishing. Now, everybody always wants to go to Lake Erie for walleye fishing and Captain Rocco is a three decade season charter captain who has decided basically for the last decade or so to commit that month of September and October to perch fishing. And he's come up with a really good milk run of spots around his local area. It's worth your time to grab a group of two, three, four guys, get him, get him in his big sport craft. He's able to anchor up and put that boat in perfect position and let you have a great time perch fishing. So again, locationally, you're just turning the corner at Toledo and head, heading just a little bit east into that Davis Bessie power plant area. That's the general area where Meineke Marina is. That's where Captain Rocco is. Otherwise, check them out at Walleye Bandit Charters. So, perch fishing in that mid area between Port Clinton and the Michigan line happening right now and for the rest of the whole month of October. Hey, are you in the market for a small outdoor shed? carport or small storage building, visit my friends up at Midwest Steel Carports. They'll travel anywhere in the Lower Peninsula to install your shed or carport for you. Visit them online at MidwestSteelCarports.com. So, last week I spent almost the whole week up at one of my favorite places, which is Lake of the Woods up in northern Minnesota, right where the rainy river runs through on the top of Minnesota and dumps into Lake of the Woods. Now, my tournament fisherman partner, Brian Nye from Adrian's Resort, and I have been friends for 30 years, and so every year I seem to go up there either in the late summer, fall, and then revisit Brian again in the wintertime. But in general, let's talk about just the amazing fishing that this Lake of the Woods and Rainy River has to offer. You know, fall is absolutely a lights out time to have what I call a no, no can fail plan. And that is, if it's blowing on the lake and it's too rough to go fish the lake, there's fish pouring into the river, setting up for that river run, following the big run of lake shiners that comes every late September into all the way through into November. So right now is an awesome time to come because it's really not that much weather dependent. Short of a driving rain going sideways, you can fish. Some days on the windy days it's going to be in the rivers and some days it's going to be out on Lake of the Woods. But either way, you're going to catch lots of fish, you're going to have a real shot at a trophy, and let me tell you what, the fish in there is fantastic, mostly because all of the resorts along the Rainy River and that whole, the bays from Zippo Bay all the way around and up into the Northwest Angle, these are all family-owned resorts who really pay attention to details. They've got customers that come two, three, four times a year. They have learned how to accommodate the fishermen, help the fishermen, and most of all, give you a great setting while you're catching fish, coming in at night, able to watch the game, play cards, have dinner, you name it. This is a place that you can put on your calendar a couple, two, three times a year to visit, and the fishing always seems to be good. So check it out. Check our website as we'll be having consistent reports from Lake of the Woods, or check out the Lake of the Woods tourism uh, website as well, where Joe Henry keeps you informed on all the bites that are going on right now at Lake of the Woods. Are you in the market for a new trailer? For all your trailer needs, big or small, visit Beck's Trailer Superstore on Highway 127, north of St. John's. Well, I'll tell you what, fall, and if you read the Woods and Waters article, we just, it's just going to be in this upcoming issue here in the middle of October. Uh, 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 my friend Eric Richards wrote a great piece on autumn bronzebacks for me uh, because I've been traveling so much. And I'm telling you what, Eric does a great job of sending me photos and making me wish I was out in the woods with him experiencing this great time of the year. But I'll, let me tell you, right now I've got a secondary report from Captain Mark Rapson of Black Pearl Charters that he's been visiting the river down south, the Kalamazoo River, the Muskegon River, the Grand River, all three of those, I'm getting reports that the smallmouth bass action is fantastic right now. Most of the guys are throwing small rapalas, so number nines, number 11, just the stick style, not jointed, casting them up, from the 
mid-river toward shore and working areas in and around wood and laydowns and things like that, just a simple cast and retrieve. Also in some deeper holes, much the same way you would kind of fish for trout, uh, you're gonna fish for these bronze backs. And I'm telling you, if you're looking at these pictures, there's some really nice fish coming in right now. Now, I, I've been unaware of this bite. I'll just confess right now, I got turned on to this bite by my guides who when they pull their boats, these salmon charter guys, when they pull their boats, they still like to fish and not all of them are targeting steelhead. Some of these guys are really avid smallmouth bass fishermen. And so we're gonna try to keep you up on this for the next month or month and a half. But apparently the Grand River, the Muskegon River, the Kalamazoo River, there's some awesome fishing going on right now for smallmouth bass casting stick baits in and around the deeper holes and the laydowns. Give it a try. It could be a lot of fun. You can do it out of a drift boat. You can do it wading. You can do it from shore. So this is kind of one of those things that you can find your niche and do whatever suits you best. But keep track of it. We'll have write-ups on our website and read that article in Woods and Waters and enjoy some of this great river action that happens every fall here in Michigan. Hey, thanks for joining us. We had a great time talking to our charter captains this week. Man, I'm telling you what, there's guys there's out there doing a lot of really good fish, fishing. Right now it seems to be perch, it seems to be walleye. We throw that northern pike bite in and that smallmouth bass bite in. There's a lot of different varieties for people to have a great time, time outdoors in Michigan. So we'll see you again next week here on the Hot Bites Fishing Report.